Good morning, everyone. Um, this is the November 4th meeting of the Elementary School Building Committee. Um, and today, as I think as everyone knows, and Margaret will go over the agenda, we are focused on the out of doors and we have several guests uh, that will be introduced as we go through this. And I just wanted to say at the very beginning, um, assuming we have time, I as chair invited the three residents that have put forth a, a Community Preservation Act proposal uh, to help support the fields at Fort River. And I made that decision because it's directly germane to the committee and I thought it was important people see the content. So they're on today for a presentation and questions and answers. So I wanna start the meeting as always by making sure since we're conducting this virtually, that everyone can see and be heard. And I'll just go around in the order of the screen and just let me know um, that all is well. Phoebe. Yes, hi. Mike. Present. Allison. Hello, yes. Rupert. Ha -cha 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 -cha. <laughs> there. Sean. Here. Simone. Here. And Angelica. Here. Okay, I am going to turn the meeting over to Margaret and then she will uh, introduce uh, the UNESCO team. And I, I want to remind everyone that we're on the every other meeting schedule time wise, and we'll do that later in the meeting as well. So thank you very much. And I'm ready to start the meeting, Margaret. Kathy, can you enable screen sharing? And sharing screen. Who do I, how do I do that? Share, I just click share. Do you know, Sean, how I? I, I think you have to make Margaret co-host or something, something like that. There's there's three button if you hover over her face. And okay, then three I've never had, yeah, something. I've never had that. Um, oh. Kat, Kath, if you wanna make me co-host, I can. Um... <laughs> okay. If you just click the, yeah, the three dots and hit make co-host. Right. Okay, so make you co-host. Yes. So I've always been able, she's always been able to screen share before, but good, Sean, this will teach me how to do this. You're co-host now, Sean. Is, uh, I think you have to just make uh, Margaret co-host as well for now while she's sharing. Okay, here you go, Margaret. I think we must have, our, our our IT team may have put this in as a safety feature because I noticed it in another meeting also. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks team. Um, so just to recap what Kathy just said, we're gonna focus on uh, the site design. Um, we are, we have some guests who are gonna talk about the CPA proposal that they made. And we have one invoice to look at. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Danisco to move on with the presentation. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm gonna, we're probably gonna turn it mostly over to uh, Tim Cooper, number two. <laughs> Bill, can you wait? <laughs> this is Bill Brown. Um, Bill Brown is uh, uh, with Brown Sardina, our landscape um, architects. And he has been working closely with us, uh, obviously, since the inception of the project. Um, we do want to say that at the very beginning, I think Tim has the presentation. Um, what we want to do is kind of walk through where we are with the overall site. Oh, so do you need to be? Yeah, I also so need to be allowed to share my screen. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. This is um, not new. Okay. This is, that's okay. That's all right. I think, it, I think it normally happens quietly in the background, Kathy. No, <laughs> no, it doesn't. It, we haven't had to do this before for uh, someone this. changed the settings. Right. So it's been a, uh, uh, there you you know, it, it is, it stops you from being Zoom bombed um, yeah, if yeah. you're in total control of screen sharing. Yeah. And I see Ben has joined. Ben, you just, can I call on you just to make sure we can, you can hear us and we can hear you? Ben? Oh, well, yep, I can hear you. Okay, great. 
Thanks, Ben. So, so I just, just I'll let we'll we'll get into the exciting stuff. I, I think what we just wanted to really say um, as we start this discussion, and we look forward to hearing the from the three folks that submitted the CPA. Um, but ultimately, um, it's a school, and we're really excited about what we're going to be able to do to enhance all of the activities inside and outside of the school. And that was really important for us to be able to um, move the project forward, especially the site design as it relates to the stormwater management on site, understanding the relationship for um, circulation on site. And I believe we, we spent a little bit of time talking about that last week, but or last time, but we'll walk through that again. And then what, what we just want to point out, Tim, maybe you just want to go to a slide, um, is that we've identified an area north of the school activities for community use. Um, we do not need decisions today. We do not need decisions tomorrow. We will um, prepare the area and then how it's striped how the fences go, if there are fences, et cetera, going forward. Um, we don't need that information at all right now. So we will continue these conversations with the community to make sure that it is the best layouts that will meet the needs of, I shouldn't say all because everyone has their unique um, requirements, but that satisfies the community at large. So I just want to say whatever is represented in these graphics are just so that people can kind of visualize the area, the size, and that we will continue to work with you on how these um, the fields to the north are actually or ultimately laid out. So we'll continue those conversations. Look forward to the conversation with the three folks uh, related to the CPA, but I just want you to know um, this this is absolutely just diagrammatic to give you an idea of the size of the area. This is not final, nor are we needing a final decision anytime soon. So Tim, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Um... And I'm quickly going to turn it over to Bill Brown, but uh, just to, to say that we have these site plans uh, that we're going to go through that uh, show the entire site, as Donna was alluding to. Then we're going to zoom into the outdoor play and learning spaces around the building itself, and then just review uh, the site circulation as it progress. But and then uh, quickly review if, as we've adjusted the site plan, pushed the building a little bit to the south, introduced this bend into it. We'll just. Uh, show what that means inside the building briefly after we walk through the site plans. But with that, um, I think I'll hand it over to Bill to talk about the organization of the different aspects of the outdoor learning and play around the building. Thanks, Tim. Um, what I wanted to do is start with site circulation from Southeast Street uh, into the site. And on the Northern part of the site, you can see that there is a sidewalk currently on, uh, on the project. We are uh, installing a, a sidewalk that connects uh, to the left side of the fields that's part of the drop-off uh, zone for uh, the students and for, for parent drop-off. To the north of the fields, we have another path that connects through to where the fields could be located and then off to the wetlands uh, to the east as well. And then coming south, around the other side of the fields, we're connecting to the playground area. And as you go around uh, and continue the path, you can circulate through the outside of the school area and then back around to the school and then back out to Southeast Street as well. So there's a good circulation system uh, throughout, throughout the site. What we're um, looking at with regard to the parking areas and drainage, there's um, we're integrating stormwater management uh, into the site in a way that it can be used for educational purposes as well. 
So in the parking lot that's to the west of the fields, there's two um, drainage areas where the stormwater goes into. They're only uh, a foot or two deep. It helps clean the water and then gets into uh, the drainage system. And then south of the school, um, where the drop-off is for the buses, there's an island in there as well. All the water is going into that area. It's being cleaned and then taken off of the site. And we've used these areas, even in parking lots for uh, you know, demonstration areas, plaques, uh, areas for learning uh, for the students so that they can understand how stormwater reacts throughout the site. Now, north of the school, we do have the play fields. And as Donna said, there's, um, there's options in terms of how the fields could be laid out. One of the important things to know though, is that um, we are uh, raising the fields from the existing grade, uh, a foot to a foot and a half. And uh, we are installing um, roughly nine inches to one foot of uh, amended topsoil so that we get good grass coverage. And then we have a sub drain system uh, below the fields to get water off the fields so that the fields can be dry. The problem with fields is, and, and you're, you recognize this on this project, is that uh, water is very close to the surface. So we're going to take the water off of the fields so that they're uh, playable more quickly, especially in the fall and in the spring. <clears throat> so around the school area, we, we do have our drop-off. You can see where the drop-off is with entrance to the school. To the north of that, we, have, uh, we, we do maintain uh, fire truck access around and through the playgrounds. Um, so starting at the drop off the loop for the buses on the bottom of the page, you're able to circulate around in each direction so that fire trucks can get around. And as you come into the play areas, um, you are able to access the door into the cafeteria. Um, Okay, larger scale. So you're able to access um, the doorway into the cafeteria. There is an area outside the cafeteria where there's an opportunity for tables and chairs for the kids to uh, eat outside. You can do art projects outside on those tables. It's a nice flexible area. And between there and what's labeled as play, there's asphalt uh, play areas. Uh, in, in that area and in that zone that we had the opportunity to um, either have games, um, planted paste surfaces with maps of the world. There, there's many, many options, um, but there is an opportunity to use that space as a play space, especially in the winter when you can plow it. To the left of the area that's marked as play is the younger kids playground area that will have the uh, uh, playground equipment. And it, what's nice about this scheme is that the, the field area that's labeled as play is between the younger kids play uh, structure area and the older kids play structure area to the right. And, you know, younger kids need less space than the older kids. And we think that the area that's um, between the cafeteria and play could be dedicated to younger kids games that could be played on the asphalt. Tim, I'm sorry to, I'm sorry, uh, Bruce, rather, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I know just for the host of the meeting, Alicia, who's a committee member is waiting to be let in. I think she's in the attendees. So I'm sorry to ruin your flow, but I, I know Alicia would be okay. interested in hearing this. So sorry to interrupt, my apologies. Yes. So I, we think that the, the younger kids will basically be concentrated sort of outside the cafeteria area and then their uh, playground area. And the, they can also use uh, the play field area as well because we know that they're gonna be um, having lunch at different times and there's not gonna be a whole lot of overlap between the older and younger kids. As you move to the east, there's a larger sort of circular area that will be the older kids play area. And then to the right of that, there's an area that has two half court basketball courts. And in addition to the half court basketball uh, courts that we'll have there, we'll have more active play like uh, four square and things and games that you would use balls with or things that you would, you know, throw with uh, sort of in that area. And um, between there and the building, again, there's an opportunity for um, other games and 
uh, to be played on the asphalt play area between the school and the playground area and uh, the area where the half court basketball courts are shown. To the right of the school, there's two full size basketball courts. The one thing that's nice about that is that side of the building as it faces west, there's solid walls uh, uh, in, in that area. Uh, so that it'll help mitigate the noise that's associated with, uh, with the basketball courts. Now, as we circulate north of where the half court basketball courts are, there's a path that connects to where you see the words nature trail. And then to the right of the bas half court basketball courts, there's a blue area. That is going to be a rain garden area. And it's only gonna be nine inches to 12 inches deep. But what it will do is that it will collect the rainwater that is on the playground uh, into that area. And there's a path around there that connects around to where the full-size basketball court is. And the circle that is shown there um, is sort of an overlooked classroom. There's an opportunity to have uh, a class out there uh, in that area, sort of between uh, the forest floor nature play area to the right and uh, the rain garden that's to the left. There's also access to the darker green area, which is the forest floor nature play area. It's a naturalized area that will be planted with a variety of trees and shrubs. What we've talked about doing is when we um, cut down trees that we're going to be cutting down on site is that we would like to be out there when that's done so that we can get you know, large stumps and branches and things like that, that we can integrate into this area to create places for people to sit, to potentially have a classroom out there. Um, and it's a nice sort of natural uh, uh, buffer um, and uh, natural area for you know, the, the faculty and the kids to enjoy. Now around the, the um, um, basketball, full-size basketball court to the south, there's another rain garden. And again, these are not deep. They're not going to hold uh, water. Uh, they will hold water for very, very high rain. Uh, events, but they will dissipate through to the subsoil very, very quickly. So they're not going to be a hazard. And so there is another rain garden in that location. And to the left of the basketball court, uh, we have our formal classroom and flexible classroom area. You can see sort of, it looks like a sail structure. And um, we have that adjacent to where the cultivation classroom is, um, where we'll probably have a shed, we'll have raised garden areas, um, large planting areas, and we intend uh, around uh, these two classroom areas to have pollinator gardens and different types of plant material um, around uh, in that area. So I think that the, what's really nice about this scheme that there's, is that there's plenty of circulation and connections throughout the site. And I think there's a lot of opportunities for even classrooms to be out, especially in the, in the, um, the forest floor play area and uh, the flexible classroom and the pollinator gardens for you to feel like you're away from sort of the hustle and bustle and all the activity um, that you know, is going to be happening in the more active play areas. These are just some you know, examples of the character of, of um, the different uh, areas like you know, the rain garden. Again, it's something that you're gonna be able to walk through and use. It's not going to hold water. Uh, the, the character of the forest floor, you know, using logs and branches and things like that to promote um, you know, worms and all kinds of things that kid, kids can look for and ants and things like that that are part of sort of the decomposition of the forest floor, places for, for kids to sit on stumps. Um, and then examples of what the cultivation garden could actually look like and the formal classroom flex space with the potential for um, a structure uh, to, in order to provide shade. Um, I just wanted to add that um, 
this scheme, um, unlike uh, what we've been showing, what we've been calling the lazy river, uh, that element is still there. Uh, the rain gardens duplicate that function, just the way that the water is flowing through the site is a little bit different. And with the rain gardens to the east of the play areas, um, you won't be crossing that feature. You know, it, it makes the play space a little bit more continuous, uh, a little bit more together, um, and, and, and the site is zoned in a little bit more efficient way. Tim, the only other thing, maybe if you just want to um, go back to the big site plan. Uh, thank you. Um, is that our goal is still to um, daylight the culvert um, towards towards the south, which um, the school department's really excited about as well as is that potentially also being another uh, learning feature. And, and as well as keeping the path the way that it currently is um, out to Pelham Street or Road uh, to, to the Northeast. So that will uh, remain available for the community as well. And we did have a really wonderful meeting yesterday with school department and uh, Jen Reese, who, who really manages the outdoor learning, came to us with a list of this is what I think I want. And we had those features already built in. So we're really, really excited. We're in sync. It's probably the most cost effective way to approach outdoor learning, taking advantage of all of the natural site elements and um, providing flexibility, shade. A couple of things to note. Um, as it relates to that would be to perhaps provide a little more canopy structure over the cafeteria for outdoor learning opportunities when the dining or lunch area is not being used for lunch uh, so that that could also be another learning area as well. Is there anything else that Jim might have mention Mike if you want to jump in or or Allison um, but I I think I think you captured it perfect that's all I have to say Rupert uh, is this a time for questions on the site work or should I wait um I, I think this is a good stopping point for the site. We have a few more slides on the plan, how it's affected, but um, this is a good point. Uh, a couple of curiosity questions. I know uh, we spent a lot of time thinking about uh, how to mitigate the high water table. Um, I'm curious whether you anticipate that there will be times when we need to actually irrigate the playing fields uh, and if that's built into the plan. Um, and then I'm also curious uh, if there, at some point to hear about uh, which areas will have walkway lights and, and field lights, et cetera. Sure, I can address the, the fields. Uh, we are, uh, have carried in the cost estimate irrigating those fields. Uh, so that is uh, part of the project budget. Um, we actually started working on the lighting plan uh, this week. And um, what we, are sh we are not showing uh, any lights currently around the field area, but we did discuss the potential to look at installing conduit for potential lights in the future. Um, but we have begun to develop uh, a lighting plan. Obviously the parking lot is gonna be lit. This area is going to be lit as well. And then what we've looked at is some lighting, pole lighting around the school, pr primarily sort of pole lights in this area. Uh, we don't want to provide, we don't think we want to provide, you know, complete lighting around the whole school, but we really want to provide safety lighting sort of at the perimeter of the school in those locations. Yeah, just, just to add to that, um, a couple of things. When, when we met with the town agencies, the public safety folks, we started that conversation about how we will light the perimeter or the exterior of the building. So we'll continue to have those conversations, Rupert, whether that's um, mm -hmm. building mounted or, or, you know, if we do put poles out, we understand 
we don't necessarily want to encourage um, playing in the back of the school with the um, basketball, or maybe we do, or maybe we provide lights out there. So we'll continue that conversation. Um, the other thing as well, as it relates to community use of the fields, we will have any lighting that is connected to the fields to be a separate meter than the rest of the building because we need to manage and maintain our EUI. <laughs> so for, for every little every little energy um, savings that we can have. So that will be a separate meter. And then there is conversation as well as to provide some um, piping for future bathrooms or whatever that that might um, the community might also want to add go ahead Kathy we so it's um I think Sean's hand is up and then I have a question after Sean so Sean thanks Kathy um is the tree line the tree line to the east is that where the current tree line is is that where the sort of darker green area is yes okay is so the so the current softball field is um sort of in the lower corner and the upper corner where the current fields are? Uh, the, the, current, the current softball field is at the lower right. Lower um, right. And then there's a baseball field in the upper right. Well, sort of at the where the, um, well, there there is a, a baseball there's really not a field there. It, there was a field there at one point in time. There's a backstop there, and there's sort of remnants of a of an infield. Okay. And it doesn't look like it's been used for probably five years or more. Probably since the last time I played softball there, which was maybe <laughs> seven years ago. Um, no. So my question more is just around. I, I anticipate usage of the fields will pick up by the community uh, once this project is done. Obviously, it'd be nice fields, um, new facilities, and so. I just wondered, you know, are there ways where the, uh, will that be a, a baseball slash softball field that's shown there currently where it can be used for both? Well, actually, currently it's shown as a, as a softball field. Okay. So it would not be. It's I, not I, a baseball I, field. That's correct. Okay. Because the, on the lower right of the site is a men's uh, softball field that's currently being used of that. So we've replicated that field. So it could okay. be used for men's softball or any softball because the baselines are the same length. Okay. Yeah. And so I'm just thinking, maybe this is a conversation with the rec department. Um, I don't know how often softball would happen there, but just wondering if it, you know, if there would be ways for the softball field and one of the other multi-purpose fields to be used at the same time. Yeah. Um, if, Sean, if there's soccer yeah. practice or football or something like that. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I, again, I'll, I'll just state that there's, there's many configurations and um, many voices in the community that we are just showing this so that people can have a context of the size of the area, but we are not in any way suggesting at this point in time that this is what's going to be there. We, okay. we want to work with uh, Park and Rec. Uh, we know soccer has an association. We know softball has a very active participant uh, group. So, so, and there are probably others. So all we're showing this is a representative of the area and that those decisions, how we stripe it, is there gonna be fence, isn't there gonna be fence? We, we don't have to worry about right now. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Kathy? Um, yeah, I'm just looking to see if anyone else has hands up, but I'll ask, I'm gonna start with, um, first off, I think this is a really exciting design. Um, and it's very responsive way back when, when we did the listening and community forum, there were lots of voices asking for outdoor learning um, as well as outdoor play. And I was happy to hear you talk with the teachers. So, uh, you know, the teachers about this configuration. And I think, um, so one of my question comments is, when are we going to be ready to actually do it as a community forum to say, here's our design? And it's part of to the committee, too, because I think some of these features will make people even more excited about the, the school. So that's just a, a comment question. The other is um, on rain gardens and some of the other space. Um, 
uh, I'm asking kind of a Rupert question on this. When I see the one at Amherst College, or we saw sort of a, a culvert in um, at a school we visited, it looks like they're pretty low maintenance. So I'm asking, is that the case, that they're sitting there and they're there, you could study and you could use them, but it's a question of if, if, if it's a dip and if it's got some rocks, does it need to be mowed? Does it be, need to be maintained in any way? And it, is that a challenge? And I'm gonna ask my third question and then you can respond to all of them. Um, I really like the layout and my third is the one I, I'm always, I think, asking is about costs. Um, have, have when we did the uh, specs for the school and got cost estimates, has this kind of a site plan for the school part was that already included? You know, have we added anything that adds adds costs beyond? And and I know you might have had a contingency factor you know, so that as you flush it out, so we're within the budget that we had budgeted for this. So before we get super excited about everything we see, um, does it have cost implications? Those are my comments, questions. So so I think um, maybe just, maybe not necessarily in the order, but um, Bill, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but these rain gardens should should require no maintenance, right? Um, natural plantings that will be supported in these rain gardens, right, Bill? Is That's there... correct. Yes. So, so, so they're really no mowing. It, we actually do not want you to mow these areas. <laughs> these are supposed to be um, natural habitats, and and we'll make sure that the plantings there can be supported in in these swales. So. You should not worry, uh, um, Rupert, cross that off your list. You don't have to mow them or plow them or whatever. <laughs> um, the, the other aspect as far as uh, cost, um, we now that we have a defined program per se, um, you can see we're trying to really utilize all of the natural elements of the site with very little additional cost as it relates to structures. Um, I, I don't recall, Tim, if we had an actual line item per se for this in the past, Kathy, but we, when we cost it out, we'll take a look at it. Some of it will be probably furniture and equipment. Some of it might be furniture and equipment. We can fold that in, but um, this schematic design pricing will be much more detailed. And yes, there was this design contingency that hopefully we can factor in to all of this. And we just have more detail, right? We have more detail on the site. We've done the borings, we've done the test pits, we've done the well testing. So we'll have a more detailed understanding of where all the costs are going at this um, next cost estimate. So let me just push you a little bit, Donna, on the green space between the little kids playground and the big kids playground. Um, at one point, maybe it was in the design subcommittee, we talked about a potential artificial covering yeah, that would be, but, but has that, has that been removed? You know, is yeah. that, yes. So, so thank you for, for bringing that up because like that's coming on off of our radar. There's so many conversations and um, elements to this. What we've decided would make the most sense is to right now create an area the students can play year round, similar to what would be this artificial turf, but the material would be the same material that we would be putting under the play structures. So it is not artificial turf. It would need and is able to be plowed so that it can be used year round. And it's a softer material that will allow for fall and for um, less injury to the students, right? So it won't be um, hard surface or blacktop. Some people call it, um, well, I call it paved area, but some people calling it asphalt. I just don't have such a negative reaction to asphalt, but this will be a softer 
play surface that kids can play on year round. So, so yes, we have removed the artificial turf from the conversation. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. So I'm just looking for any other hands. Um, the one, the one, the, my beginning comment is I, when some of this, when as a committee, we endorse or have our questions answered, um, the point at which we can start showing some of these pictures to the community. Um, I've done one district presentation. We have five in town, but um, whether we would do an evening session that's more anyone in the community, um, how much you've, you, you mentioned Jen Reese, the teachers who are, are looking to the outdoor play and learning how much this has been vetted with the group the users so just a sense of when it's ready to start doing that i know we're pretty far from construction we're, and, we're ready i i think i think that would be a really good time okay to start, start community outreach um we tim we don't do we have more elements as it relates to the building today as well um we can do a quick update on plans and then we have an updated 3d on the outside just to show um that the uh, 10 degree bend in the building is subtle but uh, it, so, but anyway, so, so yeah so i think you're right kathy I, we um have support yeah. from um all of you know the school department we we know what the layout is of the building the circulation's been established the play areas and outdoor learning has been established. So I think it would be absolute uh, perfect time to start having those community conversations. Okay, Sean. You might be about to discuss this and this, I mean, it looks like a positive change and maybe it happened last time, but it looks like the bus loop maybe changed a little bit in terms of where service vehicles will go versus where buses will go. That has evolved. Um, so the southern loop now has a, a little bit separation or better separation between where the service area is where buses drop off we've moved the stair in the center of the building to the south side to acknowledge that there is a, a you know a large number of students will be entering that way and so we've separated that a little bit from the service entering and then we've adjusted the geometry of where the vans will drop off to move it closer to the front entrance and to allow a cut through so that with buses stacking to the east end of that loop, the vans can still get through because they have a, a different dwell time and, and they're more intermittent. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions on this part of the presentation? I'm not, I'm not seeing any hands and so hopefully I'm not missing any. And I, uh, Okay, then uh, we can move on. Um, we just quickly, uh, this is a site plan that shows the uh, vehicle circulation overlay, but we uh, talked about that in the beginning as shown, buses service all at the south, and then parent and car drop off will be through the loop dropping off at the front door. And then, moving into the building to highlight the changes since the last time with the bus loop being a bit more developed to the south we've taken the center stair uh, and moved it to the south side of the building that actually gives us the flexibility to make this geometry change in the building as a whole uh, the stair being a bit more flexible than any of the program space to absorb that angle so students will be able to come in from the bus um, and go straight up the stairs to their classroom if they're on an upper floor um, and then we're beginning to work on details for shielding the service area. Um, this shows the dumpsters just south of the recycling area. We, we probably will move them even further away from the entrance and shield them more just because of the way that the geometry of trucks uh, picking up and dropping off will work. Another change in the building that has happened since the last time we spoke, we've taken the first floor of the building, which we were um, showing us 17 feet, actually 17 foot four, uh, and push it down to 16 feet to save um, 
volume that we will have to heat and cool. It will save some money in the envelope, but it'll also um, just reduce the height of the building. Um, so the only effect uh, that would be observable from the inside for an occupant of the building is that the library, which happens to align almost perfectly with the cafeteria above, yeah. will, there will be a few steps or a ramp to get into the library and the library alone. The rest of the building will be, um, all of the floors will be level. And once you get off the stair or elevator yeah. on that floor, everything will be flat. But this allows um, us to deal with a little less volume to heat and cool. It allows us to maintain the ceiling height that we want in the cafeteria to um, have performances on the stage and to have it be a space appropriate for assembly. Um, and it still maintains the ceiling height and what we want um, in the media center. Hey, Tim, it's Margaret. So mm -hmm. you said it was gone from 17.4 to 16 what? 16 even. So the floor elevations even. right now are 16 feet, 14 so, feet, and 14 feet. Yeah, so 16 inches less. That's great. Yep. And then continuing up through the building on the third floor, the stairs to, to the south. Um, there have been minor changes here, just some... Um, tidying up of the plan mm -hmm. to remove some of the ins and outs over in the mechanical area and where you will access the rooftop equipment here. So Tim, you wanna, you're pulling up a... I was gonna pull up the exterior oh, video, awesome. yeah. One second. So a lot of this will look very familiar. There are some developments. Um, we are working on um, engaging the building with the canopy structure itself. Here it recalls what you've seen on the north and south before. Uh, it is still a work in progress, uh, but uh, we think that we can make the canopy itself seem like more part of the building and less of uh, an afterthought. Uh, and we will continue to work on that design. Um, we are showing some plantings in here, but they're not, uh, they're only representative to show what is lawn and what is uh, a more substantial planting area. And we're not showing the trees that are shown on the site plan, so that they obscure the building. Um, uh, as we move to the north of the building, the circle right in front of you is the, where the um, smaller kids play area would be. We're not showing any equipment uh, just quite yet, but this is just to give you a sense of scale and how um, close to the building it is. Um, as we move to the west on the north side of the building, this area with the line around it would be that soft surface play area that Donna mentioned. Here we'd be moving to the larger kids play area, all centered on the north side of the building. And then this oval um, would be the hardscape play area with uh, two half court basketball carts. Um, this is just representative of the planning, but there would be a planting bed around that um, basketball court. And then as you get further to the west, uh, the larger planting here is just to show the area of where the rain garden would be. This circle represents that elevated um, classroom that Bill mentioned, that uh, where you could have outdoor learning talking about all of the flora and fauna that exists in this rain garden. As we circle around the west, there would be basketball courts. And you're directly over what would be the forest floor play area or outdoor learning area now. Uh, this is another rain garden. And we are circling around to the cultivation classroom. These would be raised planter beds, um, pollinator gardens around them. Um, here, there would be a shade structure for a formal, semi-formal outdoor classroom. And moving around to the bus loop. Um, as you can see, with the stair on the south side of the building now, we'll probably introduce a bit more glass to the facade, somehow tie it into the canopy that we've been showing at the kindergarten area. And, um, you know, 
delicately separate um, to, the, to the extent that we can the service area from the entrance for the kids getting off the bus. Uh, it's a little washed out here, but here we are circling back to the front of the building. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of PV. <laughs> that is a lot of PV. Uh, we don't know That's if awesome. there's, we hope we get that much. We don't know that we will yet, but this is just an aerial view to show you, um, you know, the elements that uh, Bill and Donna, we all have been talking about and how they relate and how far they are and how they surround the building. I see Alicia's hand is up. Alicia. Um, thank you. I am wondering about um, the ceiling height on the first floor versus the second and or third floors of the building. Um, and I'm also wondering if you can um, give a description on the like estimated cost difference between the soft play area services and the grass. Um, so the ceiling height um to an occupant of the building uh in a typical classroom on the first second and third floor would be the same uh the structural floor to floor height will be two feet higher from the first to second versus the second and to third and the third to roof uh, that allows us to give us space for some of the larger mechanical equipment that will feed the large spaces on the first floor and it will allow us to pop up the roof with with that ramp to the library. Um, and then your second question, um, the play surface that we've been talking about uh, without playground equipment um, uh, is if you're comparing it to what we have mentioned in the past, a, a synthetic uh, turf, they're about cost neutral, if I understand your question correctly. I, th I think she was asking versus grass, Tim. You know, if it wasn't um, the all weather surface. Is that correct, um, Alicia? Yeah, go ahead. yeah, thank you, Kathy. Yeah, there's a substantial difference between um, either a synthetic turf or the playground surface versus grass. The issue really is, is um, because there's so many children that could potentially be on it in a small area is that it would turn to to mud or dirt fairly quickly so that's why we're proposing uh, to use a resilient surface so so what we'll do is uh, as as we all are extremely cost conscious with this project um, is we're, we're pricing it this way and then uh, we should be able to have a quantity which would be associated to a cost as when, when the cost estimates come back in. And then we can make decisions on what makes the most sense as these students really are gonna be out here year round. I'm sure Mike, that's just where I go for it. <laughs> so I see Sean and Mike's hands are both up. My question's back on the other presentation. Mike, are you asking, a, are you gonna talk about the play surface here yeah. i'll wait my turn i'm good sean go ahead oh, okay tim can you pull can you go back to the other yeah. uh presentation go back to the roof view sure and, I, okay. and i'm asking this question because um i recently got a nice tour of the library um and saw some of their roof issues so that um the the area where the sort of to the north where the roof sort of angles in against uh what maybe is the media center or mm -hmm. uh above the gym, how will that area drain? Is it gonna be angled in a way that it just runs off the roof? Will there be roof drains there that, because we, again, some of our buildings in town have areas like that where it kind of collects mm -hmm. between two surfaces and it, and it doesn't drain well currently. And I'm just curious, are there different options for drainage there to where, where maybe it is more money up front, but it makes sure that the drainage is, you know, lasts longer and avoids any types of issues in the future? Nope. Um, so we have, essentially two slope roofs, uh, one at the administration space and one at the media center. And they're a little bit different in set. at the low end of the administration, there's no roof to fall onto. So most likely it will be a gutter and downspout mm -hmm. uh, into the 
system that's fairly straightforward and simple. At the media center, you do have a slope with a flat roof at the bottom where you will be collecting on, uh, essentially it'll, it'll run onto a flat roof and it will go to a drain, which is the same system that will get the water off the rest of the roof. It, it is watertight, it is sound, uh, but the short answer to the question is essentially it will run to drains that will collect the water and it will be piped out. Okay, and are there, again, is it just, is there sort of a standard um, type of drain, number of drains that you use uh, for, you know, based on the surface or are there options where, you know, if we wanted to be 100% sure in the future, there's no, so like, uh, for example, on the Jones Library roof, it doesn't seem like there's enough drains. And then the, when the drains there are there, they get blocked with leaves and whatever, and then water can pool. Um, obviously, when there's snow, it kind of piles up. Um, so, so there, are there, there are, there are options. There are options. There are drains that are paired with overflow drains, and there are drains that are single, and there are any number of sizes to accommodate but um typically our roof details we don't include overflow drains because uh we, we don't have parapets that would hold the water on the roof so if you did have an overflow it would just flow off the roof but in a situation like this where you have walls on the side we would probably include an overflow drain just as a measure of redundancy okay thank you can I, I just want to follow up on Sean's question. When I was worried about wetness on this site and called, I called over to the maintenance person in the East Hampton High School that had built in a similar area. He said the one thing that they were looking at, and it was for the second school they were building, was that we were getting more frequent um, gusher kinds of downfalls of rain, you know, so it was, and that they were going for bigger drain pipes in the new school they were building because the experience in the other school is they weren't big enough to handle the flow. Um, and it was, it was a climate change issue, you know, that they hadn't experienced this, you know, several inches all at once. So it's just, Tim, I, I don't need an answer from you, but that I, it was an insight from them on when I said, would you have done anything differently? And he said, actually, we're retrofitting now because we didn't, it's because we hadn't seen those kind of rain, rainfalls before. So we're for the second school that I guess is now open. <laughs> we're building that into the design. Um, so it was just an observation that I would never have thought of. So, Mike, you had your hand up if we want to move. I, I think I'm fine. Thank you, though. Other questions? Can can I I'm, I've got one um, just on a when what happens in the schedule. Um, I think, Donna, or Tim, at some point you said that we're, because of the distance, so the, when the school opens, how much of the playground um, and outdoor, including the dining area, how much of that place will be available to be used? Um, do you have enough space to and be putting some of that in? And then the taking down of the other school and the building of the fields. And I'm asking sort of like 2026, 2027 kinds of questions. Yeah. Um, one thing we didn't mention has shifted a bit in the most recent iterations of the plan is, so if you can see this dashed line um, here, that that is the Southern extent of the existing building. We've actually pushed the play structure areas and the outdoor play area South so that they would be up and running on the day that school opens. Uh, it looks pretty tight here, but that's within construction tolerances. Um, we imagine that in that summer transition between when the Old Four River closes, this will be cleaned up. And in the fall of the first year that the school is open, these playgrounds will be available. And everything north of that will be, that'll be contractor access, demolition of the existing building, construction of the fields to the north. And so that demolition of the building will be happening 
sometime in the fall of 2026, spring of 2027. Is that correct? Uh, I mean, yeah. more or less, you know, in terms of timing or or summer, you know, so it, it I'm just looking for when which piece gets done, not a X month. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the demolition of the school should start in the summer of 26 and hopefully be close to complete by the time the school is occupied. Uh, okay. You can't say for sure that it will be, but. But then for it should the, not extend into the spring of 27, not that, not say that the site will be completely done, but okay. it will be probably still. And then, then, then the site won't be completely done because then you have to put the soil in, put the drainage and everything for the fields. Correct. Correct. Yeah. yeah. OK. And then and then we we do want to know um, that there is like typically Bill, feel free to chime in at, at least one season of growing right uh for the fields so um the fields will not we bill it's a yeah we you know i i think that probably the following year in the spring is when they would actually be seeded and i wouldn't expect that you'd be able to play on them until probably the, the summer of the following year so you need a full year growing uh for the seed Thank you. That was an, exactly what I was looking for in terms of timing. Thank you very much. Any other questions on this? And then Tim, I don't. Do you have interior to show us too, or? Uh, we we did not anticipate okay. showing interior today. <laughs> Okay, I'm looking for any hands. So, so I should ask: Is that are you at the end of what you plan on presenting today? Yes. Yes. Okay. And I see that Jonathan has joined us, so I just want to make sure Jonathan can hear and be heard. So Jonathan is with us. And Jonathan, I don't know how much of that you caught, but the the slides are all posted, so it's a pretty robust. So Very robust and I, I joined around nine and I, ha I have no good excuse except that I've been I felt like I've spent the whole week off by a day and <laughs> didn't connect first thing this morning. No, oh, that's I'm still off by six hours. So it, but that gets me up early. So it's <laughs> um, so I don't see any other questions. So, Margaret, do we have invoices next or do or should I bring in the CPA? Um, I think we have to do invoices, so let's do the invoices. Yeah, I, you're muted. There's one invoice and it should be quick and I have it um, pulled up. So let's do that quickly and switch to that. Okay, and let me just ask um, for Bill, Donna, if he doesn't need to be here for this or, but you're welcome to stay because we're turning, we're gonna have a five minute presentation from about the proposal that would, help offset some of the costs of the school project by funding some of the field work. So yeah, I'm just- thank you, Kathy. I, Bill, actually, if you don't mind just sticking around to listen to hear- Oh, yes, I'm, I'm interested, yeah. yes. Okay. Okay, all right, Mark. So I'm just gonna quickly pull up the invoice. So the one invoice we have today is from Denisco Design. And so I thought it might be helpful if I started highlighting what the the invoices for as we go. So there's there's two pages here. There's a page. The first page is Danisco's billing. Second page is their consultants billing. So again, we're in schematic design. Um, their request for this period, which is consistent with their billing, is thirty three thirty three thirty three. And then on the next page, there's. Um, a big list of consultants who you're starting to become familiar with. And again, for this period, there's some wetlands permitting, traffic engineering, and quite a bit of geo-environmental work that's going on, which is related to um, the foundation design and the um, geothermal design. So the total, when you look at that in total, um, it's, this is the consultant number, this is the total they're billing for just a little under $60,000. And attached to this, I'm just gonna quickly scroll through the pages, um, is um, their backup. So there's 
pages from Danisco. Sorry, pages from the consultants. Um, this is Horsley Witten here, the civil engineer. Um, Horsley Witten. This is Danisco's um, related piece uh, that summarizes um, the traffic engineering. And I think behind that, we have the traffic engineering invoice itself. So there's lots of pages here. <laughs> this is all traffic engineering. Uh, traffic engineering, Danisco's summary. And then at the end, um, as always, we have their workforce participation. So um, that is it, if there is a motion. I make a motion to approve the invoice. Second. And I, before I take a vote, I, I have one question that I wanted to ask, and it wasn't about what we have been billed, but where we are, Donna, Tim. So you said we've been out looking at the wetlands, and I, and I know you did a walk around with our conservation uh, commission staff. Um, are, are we good to go, or is there issues around ANRAD or anything that we should know about? Uh, we should be good for filing the NRED. Amy from Horsley Witten walked with Erin Jock. Um, the survey uh, should be finalized this week, and then she will have the materials that she will need that she's not creating herself to file that. And that will be um, whatever the MSBA requirements are that we have done those steps. Will that be, will be at the right point then? I'm, I'm not, I don't know enough about what I'm asking, but... <laughs> hopefully that was clear um we 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 are on schedule uh is, is the is the simplest answer okay then are are there any other questions are we ready to vote and this is a motion to approve the invoice so i'm just going to do it by the screen allison yes rupert yes ben yes jonathan yes Sean? Yes. Mike? Yes. Simone? Yes. Alicia? Yes. And Angelica? Oh, I missed. Yes. And I missed Phoebe. Phoebe? Yes. And Mike? Did I do Mike? I, I already, I did. You did me. Okay. So if I missed anyone, tell me. <laughs> so it was unanimous with. Um, uh, just one person missing right now. J Margaret, you can do the. Well, is is Paul here? Is Paul... Oh, no, Paul, two people missing. Ta Paul Tammy, and Tammy and Paul. Yeah, here. that's what I have. Okay, got it. Okay. Okay. So... Any other comments before I bring in um, the CPA team? Okay. Then. Um. I'm going to take, I just want to let the, the broader audience know there will be public comments after or questions after all of this. So right now, um, I need to know um, there's a team of three people, Maria, Rudy, and Tony. Would you all like to be brought in? If so, just raise your hands. It looks like the answer is yes. Okay, Sean, can you help me bring them in? Great. I think, did we, is Maria in the room? Yep, I'm here. Okay, so um, they, at my request, um, I invited them to join us and they sent us a one page description with a second page that shows the budget on and the origin of it. And I've asked them to do about a five minute presentation and then all of us would be asking questions um, for further information for clarification. So you're on which whichever of the three of you are leading off. Thanks, uh, Kathy, I, I was going to share my screen and we have a PowerPoint presentation if that's all right with you. 
Yes, and I think with this new um, piece, we have to allow you to I, share. Kathy, I made it so panelists can share their screen. So Maria, do you wanna to try to share and see if it works? We're gonna give that a whirl here. Can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, yes. Fantastic. So um, I'm going to make the, I'm going to make it larger and go in this mode. Great. Thank you guys so much for having us to your meeting. So the title of our CPA application, if you want to find it on their site, is the Fort River Community Recreational Fields. And this um, is a picture of the existing conditions. So we have the old building. We have the three softball fields, the large one with lights down here. This is a smaller one. This field actually has been in use um, uh, in recent years, not with uh, COVID. Uh, and then we have the other multi-purpose fields that are used for um, both soccer and ultimate and anything that uh, like that. So to give you an idea, this area of this grassy field is approximately somewhere between 350 and 400,000 square feet. Um, what we're looking at now with, with the new designs that you've got um, are showing that the fields would be more consolidated up into the north into this area. And I'll talk a little bit more about size later, but this, um, this kind of square area here would, would permit the continuation of the existing uh, amenities that is four ultimate fields and you could fit two not three softball fields but that I think would be okay into what would be an approximately 200,000 square foot area I'll talk more about that in a moment so um, why would you support athletic fields at Fort River these are heavily used um, by multiple organizations and there's over a thousand regular players plus their families and, and uh, parents. Um, and there's also a lot of informal use by the community. If you go there on any given day, you will see lots of people using these fields after school hours. Um, during the school day um, and after, uh, students are also, uh, we hope, going to be using these fields. So it's a benefit to, to, the, to the kids and to the community for school-wide events, field days, multicultural fairs. This is not just for athletics, obviously. Um, and uh, the plans that you have uh, developed are going to allow for restoration of really valued facilities. These fields are much needed uh, in uh, community-wide use. And um, my heart went pitter pat when you guys talked about having uh, allowing for conduits for the plumbing and electrical to allow uh, the replacement of a comfort station and lighting, which are both highly valued by users, uh, by community users. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but there is an open space and recreation plan, which was updated in 2017, and um, the. It calls out specifically for, for many things, but specifically for improvement of the Fort River playing fields and community use. And of note, the uh, Fort River site is the uh, only town owned site uh, uh, with recreation in an environmental justice neighborhood in that southeast part of town. I'm sorry, the east part of town. So why CPA funds? You are very familiar with the fact that the MSBA is going to cap the site cost at 8%, and there is much more than 8% um, uh, of the direct costs are going to be needed for sites of the best $7 million that won't be eligible for reimbursement, so that would be borne fully by the town. Um, CPA funding would decrease the amount that we would need to ask taxpayers to uh, pay when we have our debt exclusion override vote. And we think that by decreasing the amount that is asked, it will improve the chances of success if we can have something to help offset we, uh, that, that final number. The timing is critical for this because uh, we the, the debt exclusion override vote is going to be in May. So it was this CPA funding cycle that we would need to uh, apply for and get funding for in order to explain to the public, yes, we are trying to decrease your costs. So that's why we needed to make the application this year in CPA. So a breakdown of the budget. Uh, I, and I can pull up some other slides that give some more detail. Uh, the athletic fields themselves, the improvements there, 
as you know, there were two cost estimates. A.M. Fogarty uh, esti was estimating about 160,000 square feet based on the initial diagrams that they had at that time. So that was in June. Um, and uh, PM&C took the same basis of design and diagrams and thought it was more like eight, 185,000 square feet. What we did was to pull directly from the cost estimators line items that referred only to athletic fields. Uh, and we pulled together all the, the topsoil, the, the seeding, irrigation and all that. And we used their average of what was available at that time. And that averaged to about two and a half million dollars. That's taking the direct cost <laughs> and adding on all the contingencies, the um, uh, the labor, all of those costs. So it really went from about one and a, somewhere between one and one and a half million up to 2.5 by the time you get to total project costs. So that's where we derived that. The field lighting, um, we wanted to use something that uh, a study that was done, we wanted again, go to primary sources. And we looked at the Weston and Sampson development for the proposal at the high school. Uh, and they listed field lighting as costing about $360,000. So that's where we came up with that estimate. And then finally, for the comfort station, uh, it was uh, in a the JCPC, the Joint Capital Planning Committee, uh, was looking to put a comfort station at Kiwanis Field and uh, estimating that it would cost um, in this order of magnitude. And that's how we came up with the total ask. So we're, we're, our ask from the CPA committee is $3 million. So uh, just uh, again, I really appreciate the presentation today. That was super and I'm, I'm really, so we, we are one, one iteration behind you on the proposed site plan. Um, but uh, I wanted to give some ideas about what we were thinking of for how, how would this look for the athletic recreational fields. So this is a, a notion that we had about how field lighting could be situated along the periphery to light the, um, this, this corner of the athletic fields. And this white rectangle would represent a likely spot for a comfort station, um, which would be near the parking so that the, when the community came in to use it, they would be up here and the community use would be really focused on that northern site. There would be no need to traipse through the school part. Um, but the kids that are coming in directly from school need to change and need to use the bathroom before they play. So we thought that might be a, a good location. And then this is just some notions, uh, again, general uh, design, and I appreciate that this is all still in the works. But <clears throat> currently, the ultimate uh, program uses four ultimate fields, and it's better if they're situated uh, in this longitudinal north-south direction. Um, and this allows them to be uh, grouped side by side, adjacent to one another, with some space in between <clears throat> excuse me, for the coaches and the players as they're waiting to go in. And that same area, then when softball would be playing, could be, uh, it could accommodate two softball fields. Uh, I, our thinking was that one, it would be good if it was this quote skinned uh, infield, which is basically a dirt infield, just not grass um, uh, here. And then a, a second softball field could be accommodated down here, uh, but it did, would not have to be a skinned uh, infield. It could just be having uh, bases there. Uh, would require a backstop as, as this has here, um, uh, but would not require lighting. Uh, another way to use this would be for the football and soccer. And I put two big fields. This would be enough for double the amount of football that's played there, but uh, there are many different configurations that uh, the soccer association uses because they have full size games for U12, U11 and 12, but they also have smaller um, uh, fields for like seven on seven, but there's plenty of room for soccer to be accommodated there. <clears throat> so I want to get to your questions and uh, uh, and I'm going, if uh, I can stop screen sharing so we can talk if that's what you'd like to do, Kathy. 
That sounds great. Thank you very much. Um, and please send us the chart pack, M Maria, so that we can post it. Will do. Thank you. Um, so I we are open for questions. So I'm not okay, Jonathan. Great. Just a, a quick question. Um, is the CPA process still open? Um, because I did not see in your in your in your numbers uh, money for for uh, design. And it might be good if you can still amend those numbers to include something for uh, the design of those fields. So the, uh, the 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 application process is closed. That ended on September 30th, which is why we we got it in there. We have presented our um, uh, our application to the Recreation Commission, and we are going before the CPA committee on December 1st to to make our presentation to the CPA committee. Um, the, for the <clears throat> field improvements, that increase from that the direct cost up to the total project cost would include this this development, and it, it would be part of your process because, as as you've talked about, the 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 design of the fields is included. The three hundred sixty for the comfort, I'm um, sorry, uh, for the lighting, and the two hundred thousand for the comfort station. Uh, would have some design uh, uh, money available, but again, these these are estimates. I'm not sure that that would cover it, but we can discuss that further with the CPA committee. Sean, thanks, Kathy. Um, if the so if the CPA committee recommends uh, this project in December, do you have a timeline when you would want the council to act on it? Uh, we would want them to act on it before the debt exclusion override comes up okay. so that it would be known that, yes, you know, we, there is there is some money for this. And so the 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 ask for taxpayers is less. OK, yeah, just the um, the schedule for the council to act on it has changed. I don't think it's set in stone anymore because the CPA process happens a little earlier now. So there's a little bit of flexibility, I think, with the council in terms of when they act on uh, the CPA recommendation. So it's just something to keep in mind. Yeah, I appreciate that. But yes, it would be nice to have it locked in. We're, we're looking for support um, for this uh, application on, on all levels. But yeah, having that final, yes, this money is going to be allocated and we can honestly say the total cost is decreased by X amount would be fantastic. I'm, I, I'm putting my hand up, but I want to first get to others. So Rupert, go. I, um, just out of curiosity, I understand with CPA funds, uh, you have to um, commit to a certain usage forever. Uh, and uh, have you thought about the implications for this if we need to uh, expand the school in some ways and uh, how to avoid getting into hot water around that? Thank you. Yeah, so um, we did receive some questions from the CPA committee, and that was the, they did reference that as one of them. I discussed this with uh, the director of the Recreation Commission. Um, he didn't have a problem with this with the uh, uh, committing the use of the field portion, not the you know nothing in that that south southern part of the site proposal uh, to recreation use. The the thing that's important to remember is that yes, it's for recreation use, but Absolutely, this is, uh, we would fully anticipate and hope that the kids and school community would be using that area during the day and after school hours for outdoor, um, outdoor activities. And uh, expansion, I, I haven't heard anything talking about expansion of the, the building per se, um, coming into uh, that northern area where the fields are situated. Sean, did you have a follow up on Rupert's question? Yeah, it just actually uh, reminded me. Maybe um, Tim, you can show this next at the next meeting. I know with MSBA, um, you're always supposed to kind of have like a piece of the building where you could add on additional classrooms, right? If you ever do have to expand, and I'm just curious where that is in the in the current design now with all the the nice work that's done around the building. Um, where would be that that expansion space? But again, you don't have to answer that now. Just maybe maybe for the next time, that would be helpful. So uh, I'm, 
I will build on that question and then I have a couple others. Um, it, it, I, the restriction to recreation, I think another way you could be thinking about it um, if you're when you're getting this is we have a lot of outdoor fields and space for the school. So if some future date we were expanding the building, I think recreation is a broad term. I know with the Wildwood School, we could have, if we could have ever figured out how to walk over there to that area that CPA protected, we could have put playground equipment on that Hawthorne property, you know, because it, it was rec recreation. So the recreation fields could, the athletic department wouldn't be excited with it, but it would, it could move up. So you've got some expansion potential there. So my, my question was a little bit on staging. So the, uh, this is a big ask for the CPA committee. And um, I know you are well aware of this, but there are two gigantic asks for affordable housing. Um, you know, so that if you'd been a year, if we'd been a year earlier, we, we would have had more uh, bandwidth. So if you were asked to reduce this for this first ask. Have you thought about that? And one of the um, reasons I asked for the staging, the to the extent there's a comfort station and lighting that looks to me like it's 2027 um, when that would happen. So you could say as long as the field is ready for that to have, you know, if you had the conduits in. Um, so just trying to think of where you have some give, because in my personal opinion, and I'm speaking, I have to speak as a member of the committee, and I need to be careful because I'm a council member and on finance, you know, anything more than a million would be great. You know, so I'm not saying bargain way down, but, but that was the first thing I looked at at the staging of it. And the way, just so everyone knows, the Community Preservation Act is allowed to take on debt. Um, so they wouldn't be saying out of this year's flow, it's three million. So it could be 10 year or 20 year. And they also look at when they would, and Sean is, well, can correct me when I misstate this, Sean, but they look at when the, when this would be incurred. So that it doesn't get incurred until you need the money. So there's some um, spacing when you make your presentation that the actual costs for this would be, it sounded like um, starting in uh, fall of 2026, you know, the building has been taken down and now you're putting the field. So it wouldn't hit the CPA budget until after they go out for the debt. So just trying to think of that staging. And Sean, am I correct, you know, in terms of, yeah, so then it hits as if it's a 20 year bond, it's plus interest and in going out. So, so you're gonna be pushed um, or the town is gonna be pushed for competing wants all of which we've listed as high priority. Um, so there's some flex and it's, so just be, be thinking about that as you're fielding the questions. Cause I know it's, or, or it's already come on the screen and oh my goodness, we're asking for five times more than CPA has or whatever the number is. It's, it's a big ask this year. So those are my two on thinking about where you could scale it back if you need to without losing the real offset for um, what we have to ask the taxpayers for, for the, the rest of the project. So thank you very much. Yeah, um, really, lower yeah really appreciate it. We, and we have thought, thought of that. Um, uh, yeah. That's why I was very excited to hear in today's presentation, uh, uh, Donna speak about having the, putting the conduits to have this, because I think the important thing is that you you wouldn't want to take this beautiful site that we've just created, and then a couple of years later say, "Oh, here come the here back here's the construction equipment back to lay in the conduits." So um, I think demonstrating the importance of comfort station and field lighting and that sort of thing, and preparing for it in a future year if that cannot be funded now, that's that's important. But I think it's important to lay literally lay the groundwork now for that to happen. Um, we will take any money they will give, right? Uh, we hope it is more than less. But we're, we're not going to turn our nose up at a dime. 
So, um, Tony, did you have any thoughts, any more thoughts about the funding timing and all that? No, I think Kathy's spot on. Um, you know, that was something we thought about that the north part of the site is not scheduled to begin until 2026. And so any expenses incurred for the athletic fields wouldn't be encountered until then. And the CPA committee did ask us, when do you think the funding would come out of our accounts? So it is a couple of years out. And I know that they ask for a three year window, you know, use it within three years of getting it. Um, I know that doesn't always happen. So we are conscious of that. Um, if I may, I was just wondering, where is the geothermal well field going to go now? Because I haven't seen it on recent drawings, and I'm wondering how that plays in to the development of the fields. That's uh, uh, Dinesh. Yeah. Uh, the field will be south of the building um, in the um, bus drop-off loop and then to the east of that, so the planter oh, guard in that area. So um, Margaret and Sean both have hands up. Margaret. So um, I, you know, I think in as Bill mentioned at the beginning of his presentation, um, you know, I think the what the school project is going to carry is sort of preparing a field that's available, and I think it is reasonable given this goal to do what Donna is talking about, which is provide conduits and connections for future facilities, because that's really not big money in the scale of this. But I, I wanna be a little careful um, in talking about this to be clear that um, the, there are pieces of this that would never have been reasonably part of the project. So the comfort stations, the field lighting for athletics, those kinds of things. Um, I, I never anticipated, we developed a price for them as part of feasibility, but it's a little bit, I think it, we need to be really clear about what's in the base project and, and what this athletic project is. So, because it's not exactly reducing the overall cost of the project, it's, it's actually really adding something to the school project for public use. I think what you have done is wonderful, but I just think that we need to get some clarity about that. And that will come with the schematic design estimate. And we'll have to have kind of further discussion about that. And and just Margaret, to build on that, if, um, if Dinesco can tell us the conduits, and I thought even for the comfort station, it's not zero cost to put those in, but that could be- no. uh, that it's could be a, a piece of information you have to be using with the CPAC committee, because right now what is explicitly in is the dirt and the drainage. Um, well, and, and but just and be clear, and drainage, yeah. We, we would have to do that work as part of the base school project. The MSBA yeah. would exclude it from reimbursement, but it's a decimal, it's like smaller than a decimal point in the price of the project. However, the work to make to, to make sort of form the fields, install those pieces, mark, you know, everything that's required to do that would not typically be embedded in this. We provide, we estimated it as part of um, feasibility, but I think we're gonna have to really kind of get into the nitty gritty. And I, I want, again, want to be clear that this is presented as it's a great project, it's not, necessarily in itself reducing the overall cost of the school project in my opinion yeah and i think that's one of the reasons that we wanted to seek cpa funding to have this additional separate source uh from the msba is to say there is money uh from the cpa to develop these parts of the project that are not specifically school required right so comfort yes field lighting a softball field, you know, the, the, the amenities that you need and the amenities that you need for a softball field is, is far less than even the, the field lighting. It's, it's really not much to, to put in backstop and bases and that sort of thing. But by having that other source, it's not adding that it would not add to your cost of the school building project. Uh, other Rudy, Rudy, let me just make sure there's not another question, but that then I definitely would call on you. Any uh, other? Kathy, I, I was gonna ask a question similar to what Margaret asked. I'm a little confused now. So I think 
I would say would just be really good. And maybe Tim, if you can help identify what part of the request is included in the sort of total project estimate and what part would be a value add. Because my understanding was at least part of the $3 million request is already part of the project budget and would actually reduce that overall cost. And maybe there's parts like the lighting and the and the um, and the comfort station that are additional, but knowing what that split is, I think will be important for the CPA committee. And also to Kathy's point about maybe part now, part later, um, depending on you know what, what the CPA committee is looking at. Uh, the work associated with the field, so the first light item that Marie showed is okay. with the project and the other two are- Does that include irrigation? Is that is irrigation part of, okay, thank you. And, and Tim, I just had a question when you, I had asked him separately and I gave it to the team for the estimates and you, of course, were looking at the same estimates, but they rolled up to get from the 1, 1 1.2 million of direct uh, contingency fees design. Does that feel about right? So when they feel questions on it, you know, so it went from, so everyone knows it's Jonathan's question it went from around 1.2 to 2.5. You know, it was not a small add on for the contingency, the design, and the overhead. So, is that a, um, in the realm of? Uh, the, the, the numbers that were shown um, and, and were in the realm. Um, I, I, I don't know about all the breakdown and percentages and what was in contingency, what was in. Uh, marking up for soft costs, uh, but the, the overall numbers look right, but the actual breakdown, I without looking at the that's, estimate, can't tell that's you. That's fine. Yeah. I, I, just, Tim, I can I, share. I can share what we did. I mean, it's it's kind of the bottom uh, bar of that table to get from direct to construction costs. We added thirty eight percent because that's kind that's what it looked like it was in in the cost estimation to get from there direct to construction, and then to go from construction to total project cost. For soft costs, we add we use the twenty five percent, you know, addition there. So that's how we got got from direct to construction to total project. Uh, uh, you know what I'll do is after this, Maria, I'll just resend that to them because I think you're going to need at least someone saying, you know, blessing blessing that num that that two point five. <laughs> that would be very much appreciated. Thank you. Okay. So Rudy, you had your hand up. Yeah, just um, obviously part of our intent was to help reduce the ask. So um, the field costs are an important because they're they're essentially a dual use. They're both for school and uh, serve a community recreational purpose. So um, we want to make sure that 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 help for the debt exclusion ask is in how we phase this. So and about the lights, I just wanted to add the point that. The lights actually will help, as you saw from Maria's presentation, that early slide, we're losing some field space effectively in the new plan. Um, the lights, by allowing a different timing of the field use into the evening, actually effectively increase the community playing field area because you can be running the softball in the evening and then that frees up field space you know, during the day for ultimate and so forth. So there will be an important add-on. I'm not sure it has to be phased uh, first as, uh, you know, we got a question or two about doing that. So I just wanted to make that point about the lights. The lights have a, f a function besides convenient. They actually effectively expand the community field area um, because we're, you know, you have those fields that are overlapping where you can't play ultimate and softball at the same time. But by skewing the time of use, you effectively get more space. So I, I think you heard Donna say that they, if they run the conduits, it would set up so it's on a separate meter. Because one of the issues has been that the school doesn't bear the costs of the after school, non school use. And that's been a, a little bit of a contention, but, but keeping that completely separate, um, you know. Makes, makes a lot of sense to me. And yeah. I don't know if that was ever figured out, whether the uh, current lighting is on the town meter separate from the, that was a question that came up. We, uh, in speaking with um, facilities, uh, school facilities and Amherst Trek, the, the metering is not currently separate, it, or it doesn't appear to be. Um, so well, having it separate makes sense. 
yeah, that would that that does make a lot of sense. And there could be the potential for Amherst Recreation to charge a surcharge for evening use to offset the cost of running those lights. And as I was researching field lighting, and Bill, you probably know a lot more about this, um, there's potential to have solar powered uh, flood lighting also. Um, I found some projects around the country that, that use that separate to the solar for the school. So, Mike, uh, before we, um, I think, I'm not seeing any other hands up, but Mike, are there any questions you might have from the school? Because I know that was one of the concerns, the metering, and, you know, the comfort station looks like it's near enough to the road, it could be on its own sewer line. I mean, what whatever that connection is, because it's pretty far from where the school bathrooms will be. So, I mean, that would have to be figured out in some way. Um, Rupert? Oh, I just was going to uh, throw out uh, the idea if we're looking at uh, trying to figure out how to pay for ongoing costs that we might want to look at uh, metering irrigation water as well uh, to share those costs. Yep. And um, so thank you, Rupert, for that. And thanks to folks for coming and doing the presentation, doing the work and the submission. You know, I think. Um, you know, I reiterate what I said earlier. That's why I didn't have my hand up because I know I've said this in other meetings. Is I, you know, my main priority is the school, and I appreciate the thoughtfulness of the presentation today, as well as the designers, how we're trying to make sure that uh, the community site and use uh, supports the school instead of conflicts with it. So I just wanted to share my appreciation for everyone working on this, both on the design side as well as the community interest side, that that remains at the forefront. So that's really all I had to say. Thank you, Rudy. Um, I, in that regard, I, I think it's really great that the, the new design gets uh, rid of the lazy river and sort of pulls the fields more to towards the school building, because the fields are obviously during the daytime, during the school daytime, they're, they're a, a facility for the school and um, will be used for recreation by the students. So I think even though this proposal seems to separate community use versus school use, it's really overlapping and uh, drawing those uh, fields near the school with no water barrier and sort of right next to the play space, I think is gonna be great and encourage the kids to use the fields during the day and, and for school functions, you'll have them right there. So, so I wanna be conscious of time. Um, it's 1010. So if there are no other questions for the committee, um, this gets presented to CPAC on the, give me the date, Maria. It's uh, December 1st. Um, and if you'd like, you can, there's, uh, you can watch our Recreation Commission presentation. That's, that's up on um, uh, Amherst Media YouTube uh, as well. But December 1st is when we go before the CPA. Hey, Tony, do you have one final? Because I want to open it up for general public comment too. Yeah, I just wanted to make a pitch for a um, perhaps a vote of support um, from the elementary school building committee. I think the CPA committee is going to ask us, what does the school building committee think of this? What do the designers think of this? Are they on board? So once you have a chance to ponder it and think it over and discuss it, it would be fantastic if it was a possibility to get some uh, vote of support from this committee that we can bring to the CPA committee on the 1st of December. Thank you. Thank you. I think with that, um, I am ready to open it up for general public comment. And I could return the three of you to the audience, but if you just consider that you're you're not here in terms of responding to general public comment. <laughs> um, so is there is there anyone I see one? I see one hand is up right now for public comment. Um, and I will bring you in. Bruce. Um, hi, uh, four things actually all to do with what just been said. Um, uh, the, and particularly as relates to the committee and to the design process. I think, first of all, I support what uh, Tony just said. Uh, I've made a number of applications to the CPA, and it was always the Historic Commission's endorsement that we were after, but a committee vote 
is really important. And uh, this does seem like a very uh, contiguous uh, activity here. So I encourage the committee to deliberate and uh, with the idea of uh, formal support. Uh, secondly, <coughs> um, the uh, lighting, I've already uh, sent this uh, through to the CPA through my colleague on the planning board, who's the CPA uh, uh, representative, I guess, and it has to do with the uh, lighting poles that exist. There is great value, I believe, in those existing, I think, cedar wooden poles, which are way taller than they probably need to be, so that they could be lopped off at the ground and even buried or however they might be. But I think uh, that lighting budget uh, might be uh, lowered by the salvation and reuse of those uh, uh, wonderful uh, wooden poles. Uh, thirdly, um, uh, looking at uh, Maria's plan for the softball, which I think was very helpful to see how all of those uh, activities could be uh, lined uh, or, or coexist on those fields that made it for me anyway as a member of the public uh, easier to understand the, uh, the the value and how value is extracted from this very large amorphous grass area. I wonder though whether the two softball fields the outer band lines could overlap uh, at the moment they're showing uh, just touching tangential and if they were to be able to overlap a little that would allow that infield uh, or that 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 stop that that uh, backstop uh, construct uh, structure that this advocated um, in the southeast corner could be uh, pushed further in and and it looked like it was a, a tight fit and I think if those field lines were able to overlap which I think for the level of play that we're talking about here would probably be reasonable that might be a a benefit to the flexibility uh, of the layout. And finally, um, this may or may not be useful, but I've had uh, over my years considerable experience with the composting toilets and so forth. And on the surface of it, a composting toilet is a very good fit for this kind of activity. Um, what's not obvious to me is that uh, with the, uh, the, the very level slope and the high water table, uh, feasibility might be challenged, but uh, and I don't know where the sewer lines run and I don't know how difficult it is to get there, but depending on how difficult it is to get to the sewer line and whether any cleverness can be established to uh, make uh, composting toilets uh, accessible in the location shown with the uh, ground conditions we've got and the topography and so forth, I would at least dismiss that possibility uh, before I move to a more conventional uh, sewer connected uh, toilet because these composting toilets are a very good fit for the kind of uh, uh, need that is associated with sports fields, highway stops, recreationals, camping trails, all those kinds of things. It's, it's, it's a good fit for this kind of activity. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. So um, I see both Rudy and Maria have their hands up as public comments. So R Rudy, then Maria. Yeah, um, I just wanted to make again the point that I think it would be good to add a connecting drive between the two loops um, in order to increase the flexibility of the site layout, the uh, convenience potentially during non-bus uh, hours, and uh, potentially even some safety advantages. Um, one of the great advantages of the Fort River site is that it has two entrances. And I see the merits of separating the, the bus loop from the parking loop um, during bus hours, but I think you could uh, capture that efficiency and that advantage while also capturing the advantage of a two entrance property for the parking lot by having a connecting loop separated with a bar gate that could be you know, open and closed during bus hours and signage at the beginning of the southern entrance that excludes car traffic during bus hours. So I, I hope you'll look at that as a possibility again, because I think it will make the, especially night events, tournaments, things like that, where there's gonna be heavy parking lot demand or even teachers and staff coming in before or after the bus hours, being able to use either entrance will take pressure off of the northern entrance um, onto Southeast Street. So I, I hope that will get a, another look. Thanks. Thank you, Rudy. Maria? Thank you. Um, I just wanna say um, in response to, um, to Bruce, um, I'm ashamed that I did not think of composting toilets myself 
Thank you for bringing that up. I think that is a really valuable thing to explore. And also the reuse of the poles. Yes, Curious George, reduce, reuse, recycle, love it. Um, in terms of, I'll just give you my softball thing. Um, uh, the problem with the uh, the outer part, that curved part of the outfields um, overlapping, um, is that uh, you don't have to worry about it with me hitting the ball this far, but there are people who hit the ball a country mile. Um, so uh, having overlapping fields would prevent uh, two games from occurring at the same time, which uh, they have um, historically in the past. Uh, we've had we've used two softball fields at the same time. So that would be the, the issue there. There is no fence planned um, uh, uh, for going around the outfield, which is fine. Um, so that wouldn't be in the way, but it's really uh, outfielders crashing into each other in center field. Well, I don't see any el one else with their hand up. Um, so I'll turn it back to the committee. Rudy, your hand's still up, but I'm assuming it just didn't go down. Um, if there are any final comments or questions, and the one thing I just want to remind everyone is that the two weeks from now, we're scheduled for the 1.30 start time, this alternative, and, and Alicia, through some miracle, has been able to join us for the 8.30 uh, start time, so we are thrilled that you're here. Um, so just... Uh, um, I may or may not be able to be there. Um, so Jonathan, in your volunteer role as the chair when I can't, my um, our daughter is having surgery that day and I just don't have the time of the day and it's in New York. So there's a strong chance I won't be there, but I wanted to have make sure people have on their calendar and we're not, we haven't been meeting uh, in 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 between for the design subcommittee, I think we may want to schedule a sustainability uh, uh, committee meeting, and that hasn't been scheduled yet because I know there's been a lot of modeling with the EUI, with the windows. We just heard about the ceiling coming down, the height um, glazing, so that that look on are we still on target and are there any decisions that need to be made? So that has Am I correct, Donna and Tim? We haven't scheduled that yet, but that will be something once we gather all this information, correct? That is correct. We haven't scheduled it yet, but we are expecting um, relevant results at the end of next week that would give us the ability to uh, have that conversation. So we will be reaching out to schedule that soon. Okay, so um, I'm not seeing any hands up. I want to thank everyone, including Bill, who stayed to right to the end, which we appreciate very much. And I can't tell you to me how exciting this is. And Angelica, I don't know whether you caught it, but there's not just room for outdoor dining tables, but they're thinking of the could be artwork outside too. So this um, responding to using the out of doors um, as much as possible is uh, part of this design. And I will, uh, start to try to see how we get this into to some district meetings, council meetings, so that the public starts to see. And I've figured out a way to embed your little movie of the building. And it really works well in a presentation because you can talking. So um, we, we can think of that as a soft rollout of people starting to see that there's something more than the school building committee is working merrily away. Um, so I want to thank everyone else, and I don't see any hands up. So we are adjourned at 1021 on Friday. Thank you. Thank and you.